Wow, oh, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another video, and I got a special guest today. You guys, I have Nate, also known as Lucid Dancer, and yes, he is a dancer. Dude's been killing it on TikTok. I want you guys to check out this story, not only because of what he does and his TikTok success, also, we're going to talk about one of his stories from Complex Con that's super dope. It's going to be worth y'all hearing just from a networking standpoint. So even if you know if you aren't a dancer, for one, you might want to reach out to him. Like, go ahead and plug, right? We'll make sure y'all, you might want to video, to post a video because he's popping on TikTok. But also, he's going to have a lot of great tips for you guys. Um, influencer, artist, networking, so much. This thing is action-packed. Let's get into it. I appreciate you being here, Nate. What's good? How you doing? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate sure. you reaching out too. For sure, man. For sure. Um, give a little bit background. How long have you been on TikTok? Let's start with TikTok and then we'll flip into some of the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, I have TikTok since August. So it's just been about four to five months. Okay. Yeah. And, and now you're right about at 100k you're, you're, you're close to that you got a video that took off for 5 million views what do you feel like was your success on tiktok no actually were you popping on other platforms before tiktok no not like this tiktok uh became my biggest platform in five months in comparison to instagram youtube facebook twitter where my biggest platform at the time was ig like 1200 followers so mm. TikTok is what started blowing me up and then it kind of traveled around the internet. Got you. Got you. Traveled around the internet. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Uh, it blew up on TikTok um, overnight and then made it onto the For You page. Uh, started to get million after million on TikTok. And then I posted it on YouTube. Actually, the same day I posted it on TikTok. But it took about two weeks for it to catch on. And then... It got two million in a week. Then, in the same day, someone posted it on Twitter, and then it got posted on Funny Hood Vids on IG, and both accumulated like two million each. Mm. And then, yeah. Wait, so hold up, the Twitter got two million, the IG got two million. You were already passing two million. Ultimately, we know you got the five million on TikTok. And then, how did the YouTube video do? I posted that on my own channel and it got 2 million uh, in a oh, week. Your own channel, your own YouTube yeah. channel. My own 55 subscri subscriber channel. Yeah. I think wow. people were looking for it and then saw that it was not only on TikTok, but on YouTube. Because I didn't want just, I didn't want it to be limited to be seen on TikTok. So I put yeah. it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man, Look, you already are speaking to what I've told people again and again and again and again about TikTok. <laughs> it's a different beast, man. Yep. It's tra transferability is different. Like you don't have people locked in. They will go and stuff for whatever reason. We can get into those nuts and bolts on another time. But people really do travel from just being on TikTok, your music, your videos, all that stuff. So. Yeah. I'm, before I even get into some of the details with you and some of the things, tips and tricks that you kind of went through and experienced, what did that feel like, bro? Uh, when I was dancing with them, the video that got viral, um, I wasn't expecting it to go viral. I was just enjoying myself. Dancing with who? The Jabberwockies. The Jabberwockies. Yeah, okay. I met two of the Jabberwockies at Complex. And uh, the quick, quick, the quick story is that I got a picture with them originally, and that's all I wanted was just to have a picture, just to be like Jabberwockies. And then I shot my shot with them. I was like, can we do a video real quick? And they were down. And then it was just a minute long. And that was pretty much the end of it. Posted on Facebook, IG, and that's where I thought it would stop. And then I was like, let's put this on TikTok and see what happens. And TikTok is a thing that made everything else happen. And I only had 80 followers on TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> Not surprised. So let's let's walk back because I do want people to get the value of um, the Jabberwockies, how you approached them and 
just complex con in general because so many people ask me do i think complex con is worth it and i say when people ask me do i think a3c is worth it do i think so many events are worth it and i said the primary thing with most of these types of events are the ability to network the ability mm -hmm. to meet certain people and hopefully leverage that into something so walk through kind of how that encounter happened and then we can get back to TikTok. Um, anyone who's been to Complex Con understands that there are celebrities and content creators all over the place, from King Vader to LL Cool J, Chance the Rapper to Sean Evans. And um, like I said, I use it as a place to network. And there's a lot of areas and opportunities of finesse, finesse at Complex Con. You can kind of sneak back to, you know, backstages and back rooms and, uh, Sometimes say someone has a VIP bracelet, but they don't want to go to complex con the next day. You can take it from them if they didn't put the wristband on too tight. Mm -hmm. And there's just these little cheat codes throughout complex con, like even sparking up a quick little conversation with someone who's working there. And if the relationship goes well, they might be you know nice enough to let you back somewhere. So because of the nature of this, this event, um, it, would kind of, it just kind of happened upon itself that I saw the Jabberwockies and I just took the opportunity to shoot my shot and to ask them if they would be down to shoot a video. But I'm networking and talking to everyone else. Uh, King Vader, The Bentis, these are guys that are huge on TikTok. Kid, Key to the Great, he's huge in the dance community. And I'm just talking to them, asking for advice, looking for contact to you know uh, collaborate with these people. Mm, okay, got you. So you're just approaching them like, yo, I dance too. I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. Let's talk like that kind of thing. Yeah. Have a quick video ready to just, you know, 15, 30 second video. Sometimes a little quick highlight reel to show different things in a very short amount of time. That's uh, okay. Like. So they can see that you ain't, you aren't a wag dancer. Yeah. Um, and then even just dancing whenever there's music around, uh, people always got their phones on looking for a moment to put on the internet. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what ended up happening. So that the goal was met. <laughs> that's true. Got you. It's interesting. So you basically, your promo is one, you already have a snippet to show people if you meet specific people and then also doing it live in real time for other people to capture. And for, look, for all they know, you could be somebody that they just don't know the name of, but yeah. if you're good at what you do, oh, oh shit, who's this? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I like that strategy. I like that strategy. So with the Jabberwockies, you said you came up, you asked for a picture, and mm -hmm. then I remember you said they just, they walked away right after the picture though. Yeah, <laughs> that was almost it. I, and I almost didn't make a TikTok. I used to think, oh, it's corny for kids. But my boy was like, just make it, stop being stubborn. I have an issue where like, I can be stubborn and I used to not be too open to ideas outside of what I like to do. Which is why I reached out to you because yeah. this is the type of stuff you say on your channel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, man. A lot of people are like that, but especially creatives. Yeah, you know, they, they get set in their own ways of different and ways of thinking. It kind of makes you see who you are. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but cool. So you got it your own way, and next thing you know, you blew up. Yeah, and the rare thing is, I don't, I didn't expect to blow up off of something that wasn't following any trends. That's not a challenge. That wasn't a dance mm. challenge. Although that is the plan to reach out to Kita, let twins and be like fiction and say, this is what got me viral with the Jabberwockies. I want to do like a handshake dance challenge at this point. You know what I mean? Okay. Handshake dance challenge. What do you mean by that? Uh, so in the video, I walk up to him, we shake hands and uh, it's the three of us and we're passing kind of like dance moves back and forth while all holding each other's hands. And uh, I, w I would in theory walk up to let twins or fiction and just go for a handshake and then it turns into a dance. So it's like, oh, every time this guy meets a famous dancer, they he shakes their hand and then like a cool video or a cool dance move starts happening. You know, it's crazy. Mm, okay, got you. I wonder if I'm, let me see if I can pull that up real quick so people can get some context since we are on, on the video. Here we go. Let's go ahead and whip this up. No, oh, man, it's not letting me. All right, I'm gonna get it up at, at, at one point in this conversation, mm -hmm. but so what did you do when it comes to hold up can you hear that yes plan oh man uh, 
right. Man, now I gotta cut it out. I hate when I have to go back and edit when I don't need to. Let me see. All right. Okay, so obviously this is it. Mm. I'm not gonna let the music play or whatever. Just let yeah, people yeah. get a no get a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Uh, uh. Yeah, they nice. <laughs> it was a lot of pressure. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the Jabberwocky is definitely one of my favorite groups. Obviously, I mean, it's it's a lot of people. Yeah. What what what, what show was that again? That they uh SNL? Blew up? Yeah. That's no, not, not, not SNL. You said SNL? Oh, uh, America's Best Dance Crew. There it is, yeah. They were just on SNL with the baby. That's what I thought you were going to say. Oh, nah, 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 man. Nah, I've been watching them. I actually... Me too. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. watch, walk with the, the dance community heavy, man. I don't... I'm not, like, an active, involved person, but I've been... Yeah, I didn't know that. dancers, yeah. Um, for, from that show to the... Even so, you think you can dance? All them weird shows, yeah. why, why YouTube binges? I knew about dance like when, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting, man. I, I love dope dances. But um, okay. <laughs> so you you did this. You had this moment, and I I like the fact that it was creative. It wasn't just like dope dancing. It was that interactive piece, right? Mm-hmm. Because I see this as a challenge. You do have to make this a challenge. Because automatically you're involving multiple people. Those ones tend to just move even more virally. Yeah. And it's, it's novel at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely something you should leverage. And I think people who are trying to figure out challenges should l- look at it from this angle. Too often, we look at challenges to just be dancers. And yes, it could be a dance because technically y'all are dancing in that. But you don't stop at just, okay, let's dance or let's do this dance or let's make it simple, right? Because why? Why would somebody do that when there's all these dances? Just like there's all this music being promoted, why would they stop to listen to your new song? Yeah. Why would they stop to check out your dancing? If I'm not an active person who's looking for dancers, I just like dancers, why would I stop to do your challenge versus everybody else's challenge that's that's being um, created these days, you know? Yeah. It's what easy made, to do. It is. It, it's yours, so yours is easy to do, and it is easy to be creative beyond the norm if you just take the time to do it. What made you, because you didn't pre-plan this, you didn't know you were going to do something with the Jabberwockies. How did y'all come up with that dance that fast? <laughs> that's, that's the easy answer. The Jabberwockies are just amazing dancers, and I'm not so bad myself, so we were able to just freestyle it. But to so specifically, y'all just thought to hold hands and I walked up to them, he shook my hand, and then the third and middle put his hand down, and we all danced to no music, by the way. (laughs) I threw the song on there because it came out the same day and it was playing all the way in the background. You could barely hear it. We weren't even really dancing to Hot by Gunna and uh, Young Thug featuring Gunna. That was just tacked on before I put it on TikTok because I was like, this needs music to feel a little better mm. and mm. now i wear the shirt a lot because i'm realizing people recognize me when i wear a striped shirt and striped shirts wasn't even really my thing but <laughs> now it's gonna be my thing for a while yo that's crazy so many elements in that because you have one the post-production understanding how to take a, a raw moment and then still make it digestible to go viral because yes i need to add this music and all these little things okay make it digestible it's cool by itself how can we make it even more digestible? And then for you to even run with the, the branding aspect of, look, people recognize me in this shirt. Now I got to wear the shirt. <laughs> yeah. We call Travis Scott because the braids are like Travis. And so oh. that's pressure to wear that hairstyle all, all the time now. <laughs> it's, hey, as they say, man, whatever blows up, whether it's what, a specific song or a specific, you know, dance, all these things, that's, that's that association. And now you have to figure out how to follow up from that. So what have you been doing to think about following up? Has it just been um, the challenge so far you've been thinking about? Uh, planning on the challenge, uh, contacting. I've been emailing dancers that have gone viral, Salif, 
Kita, the twins, um, fiction. Um, what else have I done? Reached out to you. I also work at a bar. Philadelphia Eagles came by and did an event and I uh, swoop. The mascot was there and I walked over to the guy who was part of the crew and I asked him, hey, look, I have a viral, I have a video that went viral and I have this idea. I came up with this right on the spot. I was like, hey, what if I showed up to an Eagles game? And I walked up to Swoop and I shook his hand and we did like this handshake dance that I did in the video. So um, some of these things kind of come together in the moment, but mm -hmm. even that is still, uh, that's still a, a technique or a skill that people should do. Whereas like you see an opportunity and you just go for it. Cause that's how I yeah. went viral. I just went for it. So I just quickly came up with the idea asked them if they would be down, showed them the video real quick, showed them the numbers, showed the legitimacy of the fact that it went viral, showed that it went viral on multiple platforms, showed all the followers I gained, and then asked for specific emails from coordinators and other people that are, that are important to approve of me just being at the Eagles game. Um, posting more videos. This is very important. If you go viral, you should go live on that platform the day you go viral. I, told I went that. live on TikTok because I found out I can go live because I watch your channel. You took and you said that. <laughs> <clears throat> and I was like, yo, I'm gonna go live right now. I went live, 300 people were in my live. The numbers were going up even faster. So I was already getting followers because of the video, but then followers were tacked on because it'll let you know how many people followed you through your live. And people were sending me pandas, which is like a form of TikTok currency. Mm -hmm. And um which translates to real money, by the way. Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> and then um, Twitter, I was very active on Twitter. Respond, all of them, I was active on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, responding to all the comments. And I, I, you know, just being funny and joking here and there and just interacting with all the people, engaging with the people, um, answering all the questions. I, I say hi to everyone who pops up on the live to acknowledge every person. Like, I don't care if your name is user 5227926262. I will say the whole thing. It's just like mm -hmm. sense of humor. So it's not just showing that I'm a dancer, but showing the other parts of me that I know are also just as marketable, personality and being someone that people like outside of dancing. The same thing happened on Instagram. When Funny Hood Vids posted it on their account, I went live and that was the most amount of people that had ever like been on my live all at once. It was about 60, 70 people. Oh. Uh, brought some people on live with me and we talked and they asked me like, yo, how did it happen? So I repeated the story so many times over the past month. Um, yeah. Posting my own content, wearing this shirt more often, um, <laughs> plans to do a dance video to hot. I emailed the Jabberwockies, like I spammed them, which is a technique, uh, you know, that you have, uh, you've said to do, you know, like don't feel like you're bothering them or annoying them. The point is to get their attention. Right. So, um, I emailed a lot of uh, other dance companies, um, uh, DM'd a lot of other dance Instagram accounts that post viral videos, dance viral videos, and I just would like send the same message over and over, like uh, like once every couple of days. So those are the things that I've done. Got you. So I see that you have a great ability to move in the moment recognize those opportunities and act on them at least you, you you've been you know on a hot streak right uh, right now and then you're talking about following up hitting people up to get more, more things posted all that stuff now tell me what's the plan though like in terms of a dancer then what does that look like to okay yeah you work with these other guys or you, you actually do get a video with king vader or okay you actually do end up on the philadelphia eagles field and do that dance in the middle of the game and then they put you on the jumbotron and go viral from content and all that kind of stuff okay that happens what what does sustainability look like for you that'll be taking uh me as a dancer and my skill set and this moment that is now a part of my resume bringing it to agencies bringing it to auditions call castings and uh hopefully getting signed to an agency that's a direction that a lot of dancers go and through the agencies they get booked for uh you know music videos commercials uh you know they go on tour stuff like that is the goal of mine is to be able to tour with artists uh you know i have dreams with 
performing with certain favorite artists, but it's not like I would turn it down if it's someone that I don't listen to, but it's, it's all about being able to um, build, build, build a larger platform from this point on and create consistent work and start getting paid and stuff like that. Mm. Okay. Got you. Who, I'm just curious because, okay, agency, agency is not necessarily a record label, but right. I'm trying to imagine if that doesn't happen, right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you, you are building things up, com competition is heavy, and you still have to look for somebody else's approval on that side of things. Mm -hmm. What ability do you have, or have you seen anybody build their own kind of indie fan base from a, from a uh, dancer standpoint and flip that themselves where they can control their own destiny a little bit more that way? Yeah, I can use Let Twins as an, as an example. They, um, they, they have such a strong brand being twin dancers with big afros, tall black guys from French. Uh, from France that yeah. they they kind of they already had that w working for them and they dance very differently than everyone else yeah their style is super unique yeah and um that was able to help them win I mean their skill set alone was able to win battles and then they were able to collect money from winning uh, competitions and then uh, they get noticed by world of dance and they perform on there and then they started to tour they started doing master classes and workshops all over the world they were able to travel and get that going mm -hmm. that's something that um I and other dancers can, um, that's another direction we can go in as well, is we can become teachers, we can become um, instructors, we can become owners of our own dance studio. There's an I Am Fresh dance studio in Philly owned by Smart Mark, and who's also worked with Schizo, Let Twins, and um, he's been on World of Dance as well. So you can always go in the direction of investing and in opening up a dance studio, even if you're able to run out just you, you can go to already an established uh, studio and start having classes there. Cause that's happened to me too. I've been asked to work at community centers with, with kids and, you know, go a couple days a week. That's dance. That's consistent dance work. If that's, you know, the kind of question answer you're looking for. Got you. Um, so, somewhat, but I'm also thinking about the aspect of like a rock star dancer or something, I guess. Yeah, you know, that's, that's going to America's Got Talent, ABDC, World of Dance. Okay. Going to all the high profile uh, um, companies and platforms like that, auditioning. And those folks lock you into contracts, though, don't they? Yeah, they can. Yeah, they lock you into contracts. So that comes down to you bringing the right personality, the right brand, um, being marketable, and bringing your skill set, your just you being a great dancer does still kind of come down to how good can you dance? Cause you can't be on TV and not be great. Like you talked about your shirt and what that did for brand. What about, and then you talked about like twins with the Afro French uh, twins, all those things, right. That, that stand out for brand. Have you ever thought about what could make you like a brand? You know what I mean? Yeah, there's, I'm still building um, the brand because this happened without me realizing what would I, what I didn't plan for what happens if I go viral. I only knew what I can do afterwards. Um, and watching your video helped to know like what to do after you, you go viral. Cause you have a video about that, but I wasn't really prepared for that to happen the way it did. And, um, so I, like I said, I have the shirt, I have the hair, I have like my dance style was a little unique in how I look. I don't really dance like other people. There's nuances that you can detect if you're, savvy with dancers and see oh you got a little bit of this guy in you and that girl in you but it comes down to uh like my name is lucid so i want to go in a direction where my videos kind of start taking a psychedelic turn um you know dreams and reality and you know inception type of stuff and that's a lot of big budget stuff big budget ideas that i have but i'm already thinking how can i come up with content videos photo shoots that are mm. affordable that you know you. won't burn my savings into a you know into dust. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So using post production to tell a story that mm -hmm. you can brand around as well. Okay. What are some tips that you have when it comes to TikTok? Well, if you do have a video that gets you onto the for you page like me, like I said, go viral. I mean go live as soon as it happens mm -hmm. and interact with everyone. And um post consistently 
-hmm. I only post a few times a week. I would recommend posting daily, if not a few times a day. Um, that does require you to have a, a long list of stuff of ideas that, you know, check off the list so that you can and constantly come up with ideas, stuff that's consistent to whatever your, your, um, your, um, TikTok is about. Some videos I made right on the spot and it's not even dance related. One was like uh, me watching an old video game and making fun of the old like graphics. So some stuff is just like right on the spot. I make it right then and there and I post it. Um, what else would I say? Go live more often in general. Uh, pay attention to the trends and the challenges. And Why would you go more live more often in general? Um, to just, just be around to talk. It's kind of like you checking in with the people that are following you. Especially if you have a lot of followers, if you're in the 10K, 100K, um, I think that engaging with the people who are following you is a really good way to um, know what they want from you. That They can actually give you the ideas by just you talking to them and just kicking it with them. I've been on TikTok for two to three hours sometimes, and all the kids, they're middle school kids, and they'll tell me the rappers that are coming up that they like. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I'm gonna make videos of these artists, look at their videos, look for the vibe, look for the look in the video and make dance video versions of that to connect with y'all more. And then we have a closer relationship. So interesting. I like that. The, the customer feedback essentially. And yeah. <laughs> Cause the kids at some point, they're going to be running the newest trends. They're going to be running mm -hmm. what is relevant. So as yeah. much as I like the artists that, you know, I like in my age bracket, I still want to connect with what's going to be the next wave. 100%. By also also implementing my own unique self into it. Because mm -hmm. I have my own ideas that will, you know, it all come together. As... Got you. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, cool, man. I, I appreciate just all the gems you dropped today, first and foremost, and then telling the story because I think it's interesting to hear a different perspective. Obviously, we talk about artists and, and you know, a lot of things are transferable to so many influencers and people who want to build a following, but hearing it directly from someone outside of that box, I think is extremely valuable to see what you have going on. And again, yo, man, if y'all want to get some videos posted, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, hit Nate up, you know, hit him up at Lucid Dancer. Well, obviously he's dope. You know, he, he held his own with the Jabberwockies. <laughs> hopefully you get that challenge going that would that would be my last question like what would be so the point of that challenge and getting that to blow up would be showing other people as a resume that you pop the challenge off yeah that i got other people that don't even dance all the time to do it See, man it just doesn't sit oh. right with me man that doesn't sit right with me and, I, and that's why i like will start to ask and pry so deeply into like some of the next things and what things look like for dancers, because I feel like there should be a way that bump what, what everybody else could offer you directly in terms of agency, bump becoming a teacher and some of those things. It seems like there should be a way where just directly off of who you are and what you build, like to, to in the same way, Running up a challenge for an, behind an artist song does shit for artists. There should be something that it pulls back to for you, whether mm. it's at the very least merch of mm. lined shirts. You know what I mean? Um, you know the backpack kid, how he was able to create an entire thing and brand off mm. off of that whole thing. And I guess he realized, yep, got to keep wearing his backpack, right? <laughs> Roy Purdy um, glasses. Yeah, yeah, like. But there has to be something that makes you the guy, not just being a performer with rappers or artists and things like that, which is cool. That's work. Just like you have, I can be the superstar artist and then I can also do sync deals and I can be backup singer and I can do and I can write music. There's all those versions. But I'm just thinking about the way where you can be the guy. So now you have even more leverage to do the other things because mm -hmm. you have this thing built on yourself. So mm -hmm. I encourage you to think more about that and feel free to hit me up on mm -hmm. IG when you come up when um when you come up with some ideas and things. Not gonna lie, it's the first time I've ever had an interview of this nature because um I've most of the time I'm just 
figuring a lot uh, figuring this out as I go. Your channel helped me go in certain directions uh, and be more open minded. My homie also he's also just making sure I'm not being so stubborn and closed minded because I have a tendency to do that. So I'm still someone who is learning what to do along the way. Like I don't have all the answers yet. Mm -hmm. That's why I do encourage people that if you are trying something and you're not getting the results you want, you definitely should be open to more than what you're comfortable with. Because like I said, he told me to get a TikTok and I almost didn't do it. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let me get out of my own way and just do it. What do I have to lose? But other than him being right, and I would have happy to be wrong in that situation and look how it mm -hmm. turned out. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to sum it up. I like that. Hey, be okay with being wrong sometimes. Be okay with being wrong. Quit being stubborn. Try TikTok. A lot of y'all know that I'm I'm pushing TikTok heavy these days, but it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check out how to push your music. Anybody who's into music or have friends in music, you, you can check out some music artist-specific courses at tiktokmusicpromo.com. There's a free training. Get on that. And definitely reach out to Lucid Dancer check out his TikTok, his videos are dope. And look, stay Do tuned. What'd you say? Do commissions. People, oh. people DM me all the time. I'll pay you to dance to this song. Your song can't be garbage though, uh, unless you'll put up a lot of stacks. So this is a, a small thing I will say about TikTok. And I, I don't know if I've said this anywhere. Um, I feel like I might have said it, whatever, somewhere. But look, I think also trying to get TikTok influencers to post your shit is a good A&R situation where you yep. find out if your stuff is trash or not. Because if you can't get anybody to post it, then that's starting to let, that gives you an idea. So there's a good feedback <laughs> loop there. So you'll find out. Yeah. Go to ComplexCon if you're in Long Beach, Cali area too. Um, I'm in the Philly area and I flew out there once a year. So I made it worth it. Uh, like I said, there's so much that can happen at TikTok. There's, you never know who shows up on top of the list of people that do show up. And uh, there are so many members of each team. You want to talk to those guys, too. I mean, it's one thing to talk directly to, say, Freeway or talk directly to Chance. But there's usually a manager or a team member that's around that you would rather want to talk to instead of two. Hmm. So. Yep. Great insight. Great advice. Definitely talk to the to the other guy because the other guy has a lot more power than you perceive. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And be consistent with your um, content. 100%. Appreciate you once again, man. Hey, everybody, if you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.